Anita Anand is the Minister of National Defense. She's at the National War Memorial in Ottawa. Minister, thank you so much for speaking with us today. I'd like to start by asking you what you're thinking about on this Remembrance Day in your new role as Defence Minister. Well, thanks, Katie. Um, obviously a very moving day for me as uh, this is my first uh, November 11th as the Minister of National Defence. And I have been thinking all day about our soldiers, past and present, who uh, serve our country, um, who put on a uniform every day and put service above self as well. Um, all Canadians in uniform uh, deserve our respect and solemnity today. And so that's what's on my mind. Spectators returned to the National War Memorial in Ottawa this year, though the crowds, when I walked through those crowds, they were not as large as we've seen in previous years. I know that we are still in a pandemic, and that is a factor in this. But did, does today's crowd turnout concern you at all? Uh, well, I did uh, notice that everybody around me was masked, as was I and uh, we took precautions that we would normally take. And of course, to, um, we know that over 80% of our eligible population is double vaxxed, as am I. And I think uh, these types of gatherings will likely become more normal, but it is still important for us to take public health measures seriously. Um, masking, for example, um, social distancing, uh, those are also important in addition to the vaccinations that our public health officers advise us to oh, have. Sorry, I, I, I meant um, the crowd size in terms of not necessarily about COVID. I know we are in a pandemic and that might uh, be one reason why the crowd size was much smaller than it normally is. But I, I'm more cons uh, my question is more about, are you concerned that the crowd wasn't as big as we typically see at the National War Memorial in, in Ottawa? It is usually such a, a major event. Again, I know that we're in a pandemic and we're not through it just yet and Canadians are making choices to be safe but did it concern you at all that the crowd wasn't as big as perhaps we've seen in the past? So since being sworn in as the Minister of National Defence I've had the opportunity to speak with uh, soldiers and um, those who have served across the country and I will say that the level of respect that I see for the Canadian Armed Forces is strong and it is high. Uh, we do have work to do to continue to improve uh, the situation for women, for minorities within the forces, so that everyone who serves can feel safe and protected. Uh, but I'm not one who focuses on the size of the crowd, I'm one who focuses on the job that needs to be done. Um, this might be a particularly difficult Remembrance Day for Canadians who served in Afghanistan. I'm wondering, given that it is the first time that uh, Remembrance Day is being marked after the Taliban took control of Afghanistan, I'm wondering what are you hearing from veterans who served in Afghanistan and is this a particularly difficult moment for them? Well, one thing I th think we have to focus on is that this is the 10-year anniversary uh, since the end of uh, combat in Afghanistan and that is an important anniversary to pay tribute to and in terms of what uh, veterans have mentioned to me um, they recognize the service as do we that they paid and in particular enabling a whole generation of young women and girls to be able to go to school and uh, I think that bears mentioning and remembering on a day like today, Katie. But given that Afghanistan has now fallen to the Taliban, is there, are you getting any sort of sense that today is difficult uh, given that development in Kabul? Um, I think that uh, we all recognize that the Taliban is a terrorist organization and that we still need uh, to continue to the, do the work uh, to keep uh, as many people as possible safe, especially on the exit from Afghanistan. And that's what we've committed to do as a government, um, to bring 40,000 or more people out of that country. And we have been working on that very hard. And I'd like to thank the Canadian Armed Forces for their work on the ground in Afghanistan.
Uh, I want to ask you a little bit about the backlog of benefits for our veterans. Uh, in June last year, your government committed $192 million to hire 540 temporary staff to help clear it. Uh, but there, the backlog, it still persists. Why is that? Well, uh, let's back up first of all to make sure that uh, our veterans know how grateful we are for their service. And in terms of our government's commitment to our veterans, uh, we have uh, contributed over $11 billion uh, to supports and services for our veterans. And since 2015, we have reduced, um, we've doubled the number of cases, uh, caseworkers that are working on claims for our veterans. Uh, so we do have more work to do. We're committed to a ratio of one caseworker for every 25 veterans. We're working towards that. And uh, I want veterans to know that they are top of mind today and every day for our government. And I know Minister McCauley is working very hard on this file. Uh, is there anything else that can be done to sort of help process these requests faster? Well, as I said, um, we we are committed to the process and have committed $11 billion as well as a target ratio of 25 to 1 that we're working on achieving. Um, so again, uh, this is top of mind for our government and uh, we have seen improvements in the processing times uh, for cases and claims. Um, but yes, there's more work to do and as I mentioned, uh, my colleague and the Associate Minister of Defence, uh, Minister McCauley, is working very hard on this file. Um, the last thing I want to ask you about is something that you've been asked about pretty consistently since you were given this new uh, role, and that is, you know, the, the crisis of confidence when it comes to Canada's military and the ongoing claims of sexual misconduct. You know, what is your message to members who continue to serve in this particularly difficult time? Well, first and foremost, especially on November 11th, um, we owe a debt of gratitude to the Canadian Armed Forces. Look what they've done in the past year and a half alone. They've gone into long-term care homes. They've helped with forest fires and floods. Uh, they have delivered vaccines across the country, including at the current time. Uh, they've assisted in the evacuation in Afghanistan. So we owe them our thanks for their service every day. In addition, um, we need to continue to ensure that the Canadian Armed Forces is a place where new recruits as well as existing um, members feel safe, feel protected and feel that they will have fair treatment. And that's the, um, that's the project that I'm working on with my team every day. And do you have any sense of when the government is going to make a decision on the chief of the defense staff position? Uh, th that position, as you know, is uh, one uh, that is appointed by the prime minister. The chief of defense staff serves at the pleasure of the prime minister. And uh, until that time, I'll continue working with the acting chief of defense staff, Wayne Eyre, who is serving Canadians well at this time. I work with him every day. And we are working hard on the issues, some of which I've just mentioned. Okay, so there's no sort of timeline uh, sort of uh, to, to mark at this point in time as to when a decision might come? At the current time, I'm not aware of that timeline. But as I said, the Canadian Armed Forces and Canadians at large are well served by uh, Acting Chief of Defence Staff Wayne Eyre. And uh, we are working every single day very hard on the issues that are before us. Minister Anand, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you so much, take care. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.